When we meet Don Vito Corleone, he was at the height of his power, with a firm grip over the criminal underworld. And so, naturally, he made some very powerful enemies. And there was one man in particular who had been seen as his equal in terms of power and influence, the only person that had dared to challenge the Godfather and almost succeeded. Arguably the most difficult opponent the Corleone Dons would ever face. This was, of course, Don Emilio Barzini. As we all saw, Barzini had orchestrated a masterful plan that pushed the Corleone family to the brink of collapse. Barzini, like Don Vito, was a master of the game of power. Although he was similar to Vito in many ways, Barzini was far more sly and Machiavellian. He had no morals or respect for tradition. He saw them as weaknesses, and so there were no limits to what he was willing to do to get what he wants. Although he carried himself as a gentleman, a businessman, behind all the smiles and handshakes, he was a highly capable, ruthless, and deceitful mafia boss. Barzini was not like any of the other mob bosses. He was known to run his organization like a Fortune 500 company, putting profits over everything else. His rise to power is full of treachery, betrayal, and complete disregard for any and all consequences. We will break down a lot of the secrets behind Don Barzini, uncovering how he rose to power and the tactics he utilized to do so. This is the story of the rise and inevitable fall of Don Barzini. We don't know very much about Barzini's childhood or most of his early life, but we do know he was born in 1887 in Sicily. By the early 1930s, Barzini and his brother Ettore had risen to the positions of capos in the Don Giuseppe Mariposa Mafia organization. From very early on, Barzini had one goal in mind and was willing to do whatever necessary to get there. Unlike Vito, who had somewhat of a moral compass, Barzini got rid of his early on. His life goal was to become the boss of all bosses, and nothing was going to stop him or get in the way of him reaching that goal. As time went on, Barzini would begin to question the leadership of Don Mariposa, growing increasingly infuriated by the boss's actions, and soon Barzini would finally make his move. During the infamous Olive Oil War in 1933, Mariposa was at war with the Corleone family. What initially seemed like a quick and easy victory ended up costing Mariposa everything he had. Even though Mariposa had the notorious Al Capone, the Rosato brothers, and his extremely capable capo regimes on his side, this nobody called Vito Corleone would end up annihilating the entire Mariposa empire, catapulting him to become the most powerful man in the criminal underworld. But this is something that deserves its own video, so make sure you're subscribed, because you really don't want to miss out on understanding what happened, and here's why. At the start of the war, Barzini had set up and attempted to assassinate Don Vito. Al Capone and other allies of Don Mariposa were putting everything they had to destroy Vito, but towards the end, they all jumped ship and decided to side with Vito. So this was the event that transformed Vito into the Godfather. With Mariposa out of his way, Barzini would salvage what was left, taking over the remnants of the former mighty Mariposa empire, now presiding over it as Don, renaming it after his own name. Thus, the Barzini Mafia family was born. Now, with Mariposa gone, there was now a huge power vacuum in the criminal world, and Barzini knew this from early on, so he wasted no time. While Don Vito was forming the commission during a period known as the Pacification of New York, Barzini was swift in rebuilding and transforming the organization to fit his vision and ambition for the future, instilling new ideals and getting rid of the old. And he succeeded. The Barzini family would rise to become one of the most powerful criminal organizations only behind the Corleone family, making Emilio one of the most powerful men in the country. But this was not enough for Barzini. He just saw this as the beginning. He would constantly look to modernize the organization, looking to get into all kinds of rackets and ventures, hoping to gain an edge over Don Vito. Although many of the ventures he went into were highly looked down upon by the other Dons, he often showed incredible foresight to find new business opportunities. Ventures such as Las Vegas and Cuba all had been of great interest to him from early on. But it always seemed as though he was always at least one step behind Vito and could not, for whatever reason, overtake him. But soon, an opportunity would present itself, allowing him to finally get what he desperately wanted. 
Don Barzini's plan to take over was extremely elaborate, at the same time incredibly sly and deceitful, which summarizes his character. The level of strategic thinking and prowess Barzini shows is remarkable. It shows how Machiavellian he truly was. He is not after a noble or honorable victory. He just wanted to win. Which is the reality of those who desperately want to attain power and who completely disregard any form of principles or morals. Which is also the reason why he would never attain the same level of respect Don Vito had. Here is where it all began. Barzini was approached by Virgil Solozzo on entering the drug trade, and the profits he was promising Barzini were simply unbelievable. It would be more money than all his current operations combined, and so it caught his interest. However, at the time, the commission had outlawed the selling of drugs as it caused too much unwanted attention from the authorities. Besides, why risk everything they had when they were already making more money than they know what to do with? So he needed all the other families on board, especially Don Vito, who had all the major connections needed to allow this venture to go through. But he knew he needed to keep his distance in the beginning, otherwise the other families would become suspicious of him, and if the venture turned out to be a catastrophe, he would be blamed. So he had brought in Philip Tatalia to assist him in establishing this venture, but in reality, he was just using him as a puppet, a scapegoat to use in case something went wrong. Although he needed Don Vito's connection to establish the business venture, with the profits he would be making, he could soon overtake Vito, especially that he knew Vito would not go all in as it went against his morals. I believe this drug is going to destroy us in years to come. But it also works the other way around. If Vito refuses, he could justify taking him out to the other families, citing that he was an unreasonable man and then blaming it on Tatalia and Solozzo as responsible, therefore achieving two things, getting rid of his arch nemesis and at the same time not taking any of the blame for it, keeping his image clean. And since he was already one of the most powerful of the Dons, no one is likely to challenge him with Vito gone. Plus, with the profits they would be making, their loyalty or affection for Don Vito would easily fade away. But after Solozo had the meeting with Vito, Barzini gained some new insight that could speed up his plans. During the meeting between Don Vito and Solozo, the Don refuses, which is not incredibly surprising. However, Sonny, his underboss, showed interest in the deal. With this key insight, Barzini saw an opening and would not hesitate to finally make his move. He still needed to make sure that Tatalia and Solozzo were the ones to suffer the Corleone family's retaliation. Therefore, he would use Law 26 of the 48 Laws of Power, which states, You must seem like a paragon of civility and efficiency. Your hands are never soiled by mistakes and nasty deeds. Maintain such a spotless appearance by using others as scapegoats and cat's paws to disguise your involvement. So now, with this new knowledge and his tactics ready, Barzini sets his plan as follows. Step 1. Assassinate Vito Getting rid of Vito would undoubtedly be the most critical step. However, the Don had gotten too comfortable and was not as concerned about his own security as he should have. So Barzini got to the Don's driver, Pauly, through Tatalia to cover his tracks and just told him to take the day off, call in sick, leaving the Don only with Fredo. And so then he would send two of his best hitmen to finally rid him of his staunchest rival. Step 2. Once the Don was taken out, his underboss Sonny would take over and be forced to make a peace deal. If not, all the other families would side with Barzini and turn against Sonny, who was known to be reckless. And now all that's left is the fun part. Step 3. With Vito out of the way, he can finally begin his operations, dividing the city however he wants. No one knows just yet that it's actually Barzini calling the shots, not Tatalia. Step 4. With the families on his side and Tatalia and Solozzo suffering most of the Corleone resistance, Barzini would coordinate and deliver the final blow to decimate the Corleone family once and for all. Step 5. Crown himself as the boss of all bosses. Finally, after having dealt with all his enemies and opposition, he can now finally claim this long-held ambition becoming the most powerful boss in the country. But as you know, things don't work out as planned. Although Barzini had to adapt, he still was extremely close to attaining his goal. He just needed to take out the Don's sons, and then no one would be able to stand up to him. Barzini was able to manipulate the other Dons to turn against the Corleones, especially that it was the Don's reckless son who could not be reasoned with in charge. 
Sonny would prove him wrong. He showcased his skills as a truly brilliant strategist, and with the guidance of the inner circle, he would surprise even his staunchest doubters, including Don Barzini. But then later, he would get Carlo, Don Vito's son-in-law, to ultimately get rid of Santino, the acting boss, therefore paving the way to destroy the Corleone family from within. With Santino taken out and Vito too weak to fully take over, the Corleone family would find itself at the brink of collapse. Especially that the heir to the Corleone family was also gone, there was bound to be a power struggle. He knew Hagen could take over, but Tessio or Clemenza would never allow it, since he was Irish. But instead, Vito had chosen his other son to take over, which didn't sit well with the majority of the high-ranking members in the family. Michael was relatively an outsider. He was never involved in the family business. Some could say he was even ashamed to be even associated with it. Therefore, no one really knew much about him, especially with the end goal in sight. Barzini saw him as just a kid in over his head, a small side quest, a small annoyance he would easily take care of when the time comes. After all, he managed to outplay Don Vito himself. How was this kid going to pose a challenge? But even so, he still needed to be sure, so he actually had been testing him while the Don was alive. Barzini would constantly look to see how far he could go and get away with it. He started claiming territory that was clearly under the Corleone family's control, with zero repercussions. He would analyze how Michael would react to certain situations and eventually came to the conclusion that Michael really was helpless and had no idea what he was doing, and it was only a matter of time until he could wipe him out. All he needed now was to wait. As he squeezed the Corleone family, it was starting to seem like the Corleone family was at its end. It was only a matter of time until Barzini just swept in and put the final nail in its coffin. Therefore, many were disgruntled with Michael's seemingly weak leadership, so it was only a matter of time until they started jumping ship. But this act of treason would actually come from one of the founding members. Salvatore Tessio was one of Don Vito's most intelligent and capable men. As loyal as he was to Vito, he saw that betting on Michael was not a particularly smart move to make, and so he decided to switch sides. Barzini knew this, and when he was approached by Tessio, he had finally decided on what his next few moves would be. So with a solid plan and all his pieces in place, everything was ready for Barzini to take over, which is why he treated Vito's funeral as his coronation. All of the pieces had aligned, the only obstacle in his way was removed dealing with the former Don's spoiled and inexperienced son. He was now finally in the best possible position he could have ever wanted. The Corleone family was in its final days, as he was expanding into their territories with no resistance. He was now proclaiming his position as the boss of all bosses. But to finish this once and for all, he needed to land one final blow that would crush the Corleone family. All he needed to do was to take out the remaining Corleone Don. Seems simple enough. He cut a deal with Salvatore Tessio to assist in this final endeavor, where he would hand over Michael on a silver platter. However, as we all know, this would never end up actually happening. Michael's meticulous and ambitious move did come as a huge surprise. No one could have predicted that Michael was capable of such a thing. But what really led Barzini to ruin were two things, his ego and underestimating his enemy. He was already celebrating his new position, not realizing that he won the battle, not the war, getting comfortable and easing his guard, which throughout history has led to the destruction and downfall of entire empires, as well as some of the most intelligent and strategic minds in human history. As you know, many of the characters and events in The Godfather are based on real life, and Don Barzini is no exception. Some of you might have guessed that the main inspirations behind Barzini is Vito Genovese. However, he also shares many similarities to other infamous mobsters, specifically Lucky Luciano and even Frank Costello. If you want to find out more, comment below and we'll cover it in a future video. In the end, we all know the fate of Don Barzini, but what's really fascinating is the fact that Don Vito was actually ahead the whole time. He managed to utilize the wisdom and principles we constantly discuss on this channel to come out on top. In the next video, we'll uncover why his strategy worked and how he was able to turn things around so drastically that not only did he survive, he managed to crush his enemy. What's even more incredible is that these strategies and principles have been laid out by some of the most brilliant minds in history. And as surprising as it may seem, you can learn to use it in your life.
Yes, it is absolutely possible to use them in a completely ethical way that will benefit you and everyone around you. It's actually more dangerous if you do not understand them. If you look at any individual who managed to reach the heights of success in their field throughout history, they all had mastered the principles we discuss on this channel. If you want to learn more, make sure you're subscribed because you'll want to see what we have planned for the next few months. And watch this video next.